The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And you have the S&Ps catching a little bit of a bid up by five points. We'll call it trading right at 4,400 as we speak. You have the NASDAQ 100 up by seven points, 15,380. Dow up 47, 34,262, and the Russell up by less than one point in the green, though, at 1740. All the markets pretty calm calm overnight. We were a bit lower in the S&Ps, as low as about 4388. I was up early this morning, about 6 a.m., just prior to that number, so S&Ps about 10 points higher than when I started looking at the market at about 5.30 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Bitcoin backing off a bit. We've had some volatility with Bitcoin recently. Back it up on the daily, right? Quite the acceleration on the prop possibility that you might get an ETF on Bitcoin hovering at around 35,640. Crude, a lot of talk about crude in the Tigers Den this morning, rightfully so. Check out the acceleration. We're trading lower yet again. Crude off by 80 pennies, 76.60. You back it up to a five-minute chart, and you see lower lows and lower highs. We make a low of 75.86, almost within the last hour. You jump over to the gold contract. Gold trades lower to 1962 yesterday. We're trading at 1970. Gold off $2 right now. You jumped in notes and bonds, sitting pretty much uh, a little bit higher. But nonetheless, as of the close of yesterday's session, flat 10804. Now, we've been talking about the 10-year. You back it up. Maybe we get a little bit of a rollover. Maybe we get a test of that channel line. Time will tell. But a lot of focus on notes and bonds, rightfully so, with the 10-year basically flat right now at 10804. And we're also talking about that we have the 10-year yield right now sitting at 4.56. I think we're at 4.62% on the program yesterday. So 10-year yield off about six basis points in the last 24 hours, flat on the session, but well above the channel line at 108.04 right now. We jump over to the volatility index. I think that's the seventh straight day. Look at that red. 1471 is where we're trading on the VIX right now. Quite a drop off from the 21 to 22 coming into the end of October. Believe it, is it seven straight days in the S&P? Eight straight days in the NASDAQ. Either way, the markets are on quite a streak, and they're picking up on that streak yet again. A lot of Fibonacci numbers on this chart. Let's back it up over here. Uh, yeah, this looks to be the eighth straight bar. Pretty remarkable. You get it all back, but we are coming into an area. A little bit of resistance. That's the area that you topped out in the middle of October. We're trading lower below 4,100. We're right back to that area, 4,400 right now. And again, this is an area that in August was actually the, the turnaround spot. So 4,400 is going to be a critical area. You break through this area, what, 4,550? Probably the next area you're heading for, which would be the highs back in September 15th on the S&Ps. All right, we talked about notes and bonds. Let's talk a little bit of mortgage rate. So we've had a little bit of a pullback. You had 10-year yields approaching 5%. We're now at 4.56, almost half a percentage point on the 10-year. That's going to impact the 30-year mortgage. 25 basis points, 7.61%. Mortgage applications for home purchases rose the most since June. Noticeable pullback, the biggest weekly drop in more than a year, but boy, still well off the numbers that we were at, even six and a half to seven, right? The bottom of this chart right now is six and a half to seven. If you ever had this chart where zero was the bottom of the Y axis, it would look a lot different. And that's how you can really make things look differently on charts sometimes, depending on where do you start the X and Y axis, right? In this case, the Y axis is started at six. Well, the drop doesn't look too substantial, but this has the bottom of the chart sitting at six and a half. I imagine that mortgages got to get below six and a half for they're really to spur something on because even a 7% mortgage right now seems a little expensive because we were stuck in a range that 4% was probably the norm for an extended period of time. So seven, eight percent, you get back to 5%, man, you'll see a buying spree. 7.61, uh, pretty interesting that even on that type of a pullback, if you're looking for a house and you just got a quote when mortgage rates were approaching 
and then you get a quote when mortgage rates are at 7.61. And if you are looking for house hooks, shop it around. There's been other articles written, the stats say it. There is a huge spread right now, a larger spread than usual in terms of where yields are and where mortgage rates are. And because of that, you have different pricing in the mortgage industry and some mortgage brokers giving better quotes than others. So shop around that mortgage. But yeah, it's probably going to make a difference. If you were thinking about it, maybe that gets you over the edge for that last payment. Maybe you drop $100 on your monthly payment, something like that, depending on the house that you're buying. Second straight weekly decline in mortgage rates is the first since mid-June. Modest relief for a struggling housing market is how they put it. So we'll see where we go from there. But guess what? Uh, since then, yields have risen, right? So that's kind of the backstory of that. We get a pullback to 4. Six, uh, excuse me, 7.61 percent. But if you just zoom in on an hourly, I mean, you're talking about in the last week, we just had the 10 year go from 105.29 to 108.03. And yeah, it doesn't look like we're pulling back to that channel line just yet, but that would be a full point lower. And we'll see where we go from there. All right, what else we got going on? How about Amazon? So, Amazon. Getting quite an acceleration yesterday, up to 143. I mean, you talk about some volatility, man. Amazon, from their earnings, excuse me, not even two weeks ago, right? What was that? Thursday night, I think, they came out with their earnings. So not even two weeks ago, from 118 to 144, 143.37 is the high yesterday, to be exact. Now, yesterday, possibly having to do with TV viewership, prime viewership, football viewership in particular, and it is interesting. I find myself watching that Thursday night game. I got Prime. Anytime you pull it up on the TV, you can pull up the live game on Prime. You can pull it up on your phone very easily. Uh, and sometimes Thursday night, you know what, winding down the night, I'll just pull up some football on Prime. Why not? They're getting some good viewers. The NFL is getting some good viewers as well. Potentially this Taylor Swift effect being in there. Can't deny that one. But so Amazon trades higher yesterday. But today they get some more news. Now they're up 60 cents, possibly just with the market. But yeah, Amazon, where are they? There we are. Prime loyalty program with one medical discount. So right now, if you're a Prime member, you can now get a $100 discount for their one medical membership. Used to be $199 a year. Uh, yes, used to be $199 a year. It's now $99 a year or $9 a month. They acquired one medical for almost $4 billion just over a year ago, July of 2022. And so they're juicing the prime benefits and they're trying to get you into their health care. And that's going to be an interesting one to see how that progresses. Yeah, so they acquired one medical. It also has pill pack, which they acquired in 2018 for 750 million. I was reading this one earlier. Yeah, they operate a network of boutique primary care practices in some parts of the U.S., primarily around major cities. They can access care from a doctor through the app, and they can also schedule virtual or in-person appointments at brick-and-mortar locations. Seems like that is where the future is going with medical, man. Even my doctor. I had a just normal checkup, yearly checkup. This is going back like six months ago or something like that. And I got a blood draw, and then I appointment just to go over the blood results, standard stuff. I ended up being sick that day or something happened that maybe I had to watch Tommy, called it up, said, no problem, we'll just do it remote. Do it remote, logged into my computer, chatted with my doctor, could see him. I was just getting the results. The results were fine. Why not do it over an app? Amazon, getting more into that business. Stay tuned, folks. we got a lot to take a look at. We'll take a look at some of the numbers coming out after the bell for their earnings. We'll be back with our man, Kevin Hanks. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets continuing to climb a bit in the pre-market. We get the S&Ps right now up by about six points. NASDAQ futures, NASDAQ 100 positive by 11, Dow positive by 52. To talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time from the Schwab Network, Fast Market, with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the outstanding team. They're usually talking hypothetical trade setups, talking options and defined risk. Kevin Hinks, we got quite a streak going on in this market, and today we pick things up in positive territory yet again. Good morning. Good morning, Tom. Yeah, you know, we said last week uh, when the non-farm payrolls came out and we looked to this week that there wasn't much to get in the way of this market. You know, it has room to run here, and sure enough, it's running. The bond auctions, or the note auctions, I guess, uh, yesterday and today will be important. $40 billion of 10-year notes. Uh, we, we should get that around 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we should get the results of that. Pretty big number. It'll it'll certainly drive the afternoon trade. And then tomorrow, 24 billion in 30-year bonds. So it'll be, you know, Jerome Powell speaking this morning. But that's just the opening remarks. That shouldn't be very in, in, uh, important at the IMF panel. He's on the panel tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. So that will be a little more important on the panel versus just opening remarks. But, yeah, the, you know, Tommy, uh, the, this market is certainly feeling lower yields, lower uh, crude oil prices. A lot going on here. We talked about crude yesterday. You were talking about whether it's yields, whether it's price of crude. Today, I just pulled it up, uh, light sweet crude on the Thinkorswim platform, down to 75 handle, Kevin, 75.86. I have it at 76.74 right now. I saw the headlines out this morning from mortgage rates down a bit to 7.61, something like that, I believe, percentage point. Uh, seems like that seems pretty relative high. We do get a little bit of a pullback, but keeping in mind as well that we've now had uh, yields pull back from that high. What do you think about that mortgage rate, Kevin? And I'm jumping around to housing a bit, but where is there a level that you might think that pulls back to that really changes the conversation? Because people are stuck at mortgages, man, at like 4%, right? And we're talking about a pullback from 8 to 7.6. It seems like that's a new normal, even if we get back to the 6 or 7% range and how that's impacting housing. Well, the real conversation is what do, what do higher rates do to new homes versus existing homes, right? That's kind of the divide in the road here. New homes are still doing quite well, even at these higher rates. And now the rates have come down slightly or stabilized here. You know, mortgage apps were up 
two and a half percent in the composite this week. So purchases were up three percent, refis up one point six percent. So think about that. Refinancing still up. Why? Because rates were higher and now they're off those highs, Tommy. So yeah, I mean I I've always said it's always been my theory. We are so behind in terms of supply of housing that buyers are going to still be there. They may be waiting on the sidelines when rates spike higher, but the minute they stabilize or come down lower, that Q4, they just come rushing in, Tommy. So I think that phenomenon is still there for housing. But, yeah, you're right. Existing home sales certainly being hurt by people with lower mortgage rates that don't want to sell, Tommy. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, whether we get low interest rates coming down the line. And you made the point, and there was an increase, man. And you look at it, it's probably a scenario where you're looking at buying a home and you don't have a home, and you're looking at a payment on an 8% mortgage, and then you look at it on a 7.6% mortgage, and you say, I just saved myself X dollars per month, and it's a substantial amount. With that in mind, Kevin, we got companies coming out with their numbers. We're nearing kind of the end of, of the marquee, but boy, we still got some big names. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market coming up today at 12, Kevin? Big day today, like Folio doing the presentation on the only Dow stock coming out with earnings this week. That's Disney. There That'll be out after the bell today. We'll also do Twilio. That comes out after the bell today as well. And then we'll look at, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little oil and we'll look at ARM, ARM Holdings. Uh, and, and so talk to them. So uh, three good names today, but obviously the highlight being Disney coming out today after the bell. Can you give me a little teaser on Disney, Kevin? I have it up here in the Thinkorswim platform. About a $4.64 move priced in in either direction for the event. Uh, not that much volatility, but we know that they have a lot going on, whether it's streaming, whether it's Iger back there, the parks, of course. What do you think about Disney? We all know the stock price has struggled, man. I have it at eighty four fifty nine, uh, well off the highs of 200 bucks a couple of years ago. Give us a little teaser, if you can, about that Disney conversation. Wet Bush um, analyst Dan Ives came out today. He thinks he's calling for Apple to buy ESPN. He thinks they'll spin off ESPN either in a majority investment. Now, I don't know. We have no idea what they're planning behind the scenes. But that was his prediction. So watch for Disney if they make any announcement about spinning off some of the television stations, spinning off ESPN, what they're going to do exactly. But, yeah, you're right. This stock is basically on a th on at or near a three-year low i think the low is around 78 dollars so it's trading 84 and a half to start the day so yeah really interesting today let's see how bob Iger, who you know let you know let's face it he's a great ceo for disney but he's going through some deep deep problems at disney yeah, I read one article about Iger. If you go back to actually when he was CEO and then you take it up to this point in time, the S&P actually exceeding the return, even though they've all done relatively well over that period of time. And you made the point pretty remarkable. I have it up here in the Thickerswim platform. The low during the pandemic of that spike low in March of 2020, 7907, you got to 7873. And that was when nobody could fly, nobody could go to any parks, movie theaters were closed, and still it makes it below that low. Uh, I saw some of that interview this morning with Dan Ives as well, and it was interesting. Interesting. You talk about the money for ESPN and, and the fact that Apple getting into that MLS deal, live sports, and there is only one live sports entity right now, and it seems like that would be the case that hasn't really made it into streaming yet, live sports, right? But we will see. Kevin, I appreciate the time as always. Uh, I'm going to be watching Fast Market at 12 today, see what you guys have to say about Disney. I appreciate it, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day, Tommy. You too. Folks, check it out, Fast Market, every day right here on the Tiger TV from the Schwab Network, Kevin Hanks, Tom White. And it is pretty remarkable when you think about what the world was pricing in, in the lows of 2020. And right now, with everybody traveling, right, the park's doing excessively well, streaming's a problem, costs are a problem, uh, but they actually dip below the pandemic lows when, remember the fear that was happening then. And even in that moment of fear, when we didn't know what lockdowns would do, we didn't know what life was gonna be like, we didn't know what the economic pullback was gonna be like, we didn't know if anybody was gonna have any money if they lost their jobs, Disney trades below that price level. And yeah, um, I think I was just talking about 30 to $40 billion potentially would be the ESPN price tag that they might push out, all speculation, okay? Uh, but you look at Disney, that represents more than 25%. I mean, you're talking about almost 30% of the value of the entire company is baked into ESPN alone. And 
you could even make it the case they buy the whole company. They got so much money. But really what they want is ESPN. You got Iger there that would do the negotiations. And it is interesting that live sports is nowhere in streaming. It's somewhere, okay? But ESPN in particular has made sure that they've kept the prime programming all on their TV channels because they make so much money for it. And I imagine that's about to change in the coming years. And so look for that. Yeah. You know, I've gotten questions for Disney before. I have Disney retirement, folks. We have nothing in the newsletter. But if you're looking for a long-term position on Disney, you can't go wrong, I think, scaling it in back at the pandemic low prices of $78 to $85. You know? And can it trade lower? you damn right it can. Because look at this run that it had in 2011 of 30 bucks up to 120 Nonetheless, stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the Open. We'll be right back in three minutes. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. you got the S&P right now up by five points, trading at 4401. So we come into today with the S&P and the Dow up for seven consecutive sessions. We have the NASDAQ 100, or NASDAQ, coming in today. Eight straight gains. Does that trend change? We will find out. We pick things up slightly in the positive. And as Kevin put it, what's, what gets ahead of this market, right? We have some companies with their numbers tonight, but no substantial change. And that doesn't mean that we have to dramatically trade higher. But boy, 
The impetus to dramatically trade lower right now is very difficult. When you think about the Fed speak that happened, we have an economy that still added 150,000 jobs. And what you have to realize is the economy is sustaining growth at a time of restrictive policy, right? Chairman said he is sure, in his mind, can't be sure, but in his mind, he's fairly certain that the policy rate that they have right now is fairly restrictive. And even in that case, we're growing. So as inflation comes down, it's going to become more and more restrictive because growth is decreasing and the interest rate they have is still at the same rate. Therefore, the gap is larger. So they have an interest rate set at almost 5.5%. And as we come down to 4% growth, 3.5% growth, 3% growth, it becomes a more restrictive policy rate because you want to match the growth with the policy rate, ideally. So what's that going to mean is that if we sustain some form of growth, which we are, as we bring down inflation, eventually they are going to have to cut. And man, it's going to be an interesting day in the market when they figure out that Chairman Powell has it on his mind that he's looking to cut at a specific date. And that's where the market is trying to figure things out right now as we come into 2024. With this conversation, you just traded up from 41.22 up to 44.04. As we make highs right now with the S&P is trading up nine points, NASDAQ 100 up by 19. Russell, you talk about Russell volatility, man. Look at where the Russell is compared to where it was August 1st. August 1st, you were at 2020. You're trading at 17.31. The S&P is only 230 points off that price level. Russell, just huge laggard in a big way. Nonetheless, the S&P is up by nine. All right, what else are we going to jump to? Interesting stories out there. How about some New York City, City casino action? It is amazing how the sports owners kind of build around their stadiums or would be and then capitalize on that real estate opportunity as well. And Steve Cohn, the Hard Rock, they have a bid for $8 billion in a casino complex right near City Field where the Met Stadium is. They're going to call it Metropolitan something. I was listening to it this morning. Just interesting, man. $8 billion. So there's three casino licenses that people are able, or people, businesses that are up for grabs that people can buy for. It's a 50-acre parking lot in Queens next to City Field. So much for the parking lot. That's coming down. We got an $8 billion casino coming in. Uh, in Tampa, similar thing in terms of where you are, in terms of the owner, and building out around that entire area. New York is probably, you know, nothing like Tampa in that same regard, but it would make sense. And boy, that would be a heck of an area in terms of an entertainment complex with an $8 billion complex right next to where the Mets play. So um, not surprising to see him putting in some money there. The new gaming complex would create 15,000 permanent and construction jobs out there. And we stay on casinos. We go to Las Vegas and Caesars. Las Vegas Caesars work uh, workers reach labor deal easing strike threats. So Caesars, they'll be back open there. Culinary Workers Union Local said Wednesday it reached a tentative labor pact with Caesars, laying the foundation for similar agreements with two other companies, MGM and Wynn. And you actually have MGM, I believe, out with their numbers after the bell today. Let's jump around. MGM, we jump over to the Analyze tab. Yes, they sure are. They're out today. They got about a $2.25 move priced in for their numbers, and the stock's been struggling, man. Let's back it up a little bit further. Pandemic lows at $6. And look at that top. Look at that double peak, right? You make a peak in 2021 at 51.17. You get 17 pennies above that price level at the beginning of this year and then trade off to 35. So MGM out with their numbers after the bell. See how Disney's trading with their numbers after the bell. Disney basically flat, we've talked about, right near the pandemic lows for Disney. All right, and let's jump around to a little bit of WeWork. So WeWork is going BK. And yeah, is this the beginning of the um, commercial real estate bubble kind of imploding? Because you're going to have creditors, okay? You're going to have owners. They are a large tenant, and I think they're breaking something like 75 leases at least. Let's see. They say it? I was reading a couple articles about this this morning, listening to it on Bloomberg as well. Okay, so here, aside from the debt, cutting back leases is another critical part of the plan. The company expects to slash its rent payments by $654 million next year. Much of that saving 
comes from canceling leases in at least 105 locations in the U.S. and Canada and renegotiating rent on 58 other. So, yeah, you're talking about 163 leases, and those are going to be large leases that they're going to renegotiate with landlords, with creditors. Um, and pretty remarkable Newman walks away regardless. That was the conversation yesterday, rightfully so. And nonetheless, he walks away with hundreds of millions, if not up to almost close to a billion dollars, and they go BK, and they were once at 47 billion ducks, bucks. So be careful out there. All right, speaking of money, man, this one's interesting in terms of influencers. Logan Paul and KSI's Prime Drinks are set to surpass $1.2 billion in sales. Now, they have sponsorship deals, which are pushing this out. So they're probably spending some big money to plow into that type of sales. Wonder how that works out in the long run. But $1.2 billion in sales for an a energy drink? Is this a Prime Drinks? I'm not even familiar. Has anybody in the den heard of these Prime Drinks? I mean, I'm probably not the demographic in my 40s for these. Um, but $1.2 billion in annual sales. I mean, you've seen it with Kardashian, with Kim, in terms of pushing out brands. And it's pretty remarkable. But they have arrangements with the UFC, Major League Baseball's LA Dodgers, uh, Arsenal, the soccer club. Nonetheless, remarkable what you can do with the social media following these day, these days. Okay, let's jump back to the market. We'll take a look at some of the other equities moving this morning. You got Rivian out with their numbers. And check it out, man. They were strong numbers and they give it all back. Whew, that is a tough one. Uh, Rivian, let's pull the headline over for Rivian. Hold on. Where are they? Oh, I thought I had them up here. Shame on me. Okay, I'll find Rivian later in the program. We're going to be coming back talking to our man Teddy Kegsack coming up after the next break. But they had strong production gains. Looks like that's not going to cut it, man. Look at that fall off. And Rivian, of course. I mean, imagine they almost got WeWork out to the public, right? They almost got it out. If Newman had just been a little bit more constrained, and he did okay, but probably made a few more concessions, right? Given up a few more board seats or something like that. They might've actually got that out to the public. They didn't. And it's gone BK within two or three years. Rivian, they got it out to the public. Uh, traded up to 180 and even this morning, 1741 for Rivian. Remember that they were pre-revenue valued at like $100 billion, $200 billion, bonkers. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstat. We'll be talking some currencies. We'll be talking some crude. How about that pullback in crude recently? Dollar index this morning, up about 15 pennies at 105.69. That crude contract, 76.71. We'll talk about yields, we'll talk some currencies. We'll talk some commodities. We'll take a look at the yen as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with Teddy. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets holding on to gain so far with the S&P up by about eight points, trading at 4403. We got the dollar index right now, DXY, up about 15 pennies at 105.69. To talk about some of that Forex action, we jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report every Monday with new issues, updates throughout the week when warranted. Head on over to the front page of TFNN, right under the newsletter tab. You'll find that he's got a couple of great courses under the services tab as well, talking about webinars that you can access. But let's jump into that dollar index and some currencies. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So I always love reading your letter on Mondays, man. And I was, you lead it off usually with the dollar index. So maybe if we can lead off with the dollar index, we're kind of in a little bit of a chop here off the prior levels, but 105.68. Um, what do you think about the dollar? Maybe we can start there. Sure, sure. Um, we can start with the dollar index. Uh, now, one thing you got to think about is what's gone on with the Fed meeting recently. OK, so the reaction I think that we're getting from the markets is interesting. Um, however, uh, I don't buy the fact that there's we're picking a top in yields right now. I think that's what the media is doing and the consensus is doing. And I don't like to try and pick a top or a bottom, especially in something like the stock and like the S&Ps or the bond market on such a heavy trend that we're experiencing. And I think the dollar index, you have to realize that we're coming off a lower move high and we made a lower move low, you know, <clears throat> on uh, on Friday, you know. So, I mean. Right now, we're in a short-term correction with the dollar index. I still think that we could probably probe support a little bit more, and I have three trade setups that kind of are going with that, which would mean that we'll probably see the dollar index test support over the next few sessions. Um, now, are we going to go very far? Well, you got to realize the dollar index has been on a terror for the past, like, you know, four or five months, you know? So for us to have even just a 3 to 5% correction is a profit taking move you know it has nothing to do with the overall economy or trends overall going on i think it's just healthy so yeah i'm a little bit bearish the dollar and if you would like to talk about uh the yen the euro and the pound i got some trade setups that would kind of reinforce that that view if you'd like to go over we love those it. let's do it where do you want to start Okay, well, I think uh, I don't know if you can pull up a euro US dollar chart. Um, sure. But, uh, okay, so if you pull that up on the daily, okay, you'll notice that we made a new high on Monday and we've had relatively just a little bit lower of a trade over the past few sessions going into today. I think that today's bottom is very critical. And sometime between today's trading right now going into tomorrow's close, if we can take out the high from Monday, 
that would be a nice indication that we could probably see the euro US dollar get a move of probably up into that 108 pushing 109 handle. Okay, now that would put pressure on the dollar index. Okay, if this was to occur. Now, this trade is forming. So today, right now, I'm not saying to buy into this break right now. You need a confirmation of tomorrow. If tomorrow we get take out the high from Monday, then I think you have a very good indication that you're gonna catch a nice rally that will trade into Friday and into next week, okay? Now, if you can pull up a British pound um, US dollar trade um, chart, yep. that's also setting up in a very similar pattern, okay? So if you see how we made that high on Monday with the the low that we're coming off of today, if that holds and if we can trade higher up towards that high or take it out, you know, over between somewhere between today and tomorrow's close, once again, you're going to have that bullish situation, which will weigh on the dollar index because these are the two heavyweights in the dollar index. OK, so if they both break out to the upside, I could see the pound push that 125.94 up to maybe even 127.32. Remember, the pound can give you more bang for your buck on volatility, especially when it starts to spike into an area okay or trend start a new trend so i'm not saying that we're extending a trend you know but i think there's a possibility to probe that because the situation is brewing right now okay but once again i wouldn't say to try and buy into it right now wait for confirmation tomorrow and then jump on the trend then and here's the kicker that i think will really really touch this off okay and i know you like talking about the yen because of its influence in the gold and other markets now if you look at the u.s dollar yen chart on a daily basis They've been rallying off of a nice higher move low. However, if you look at that higher move low and the last low before that, you have kind of a head and shoulders forming. So if you take the low from last week and the low was, was it, uh, I think the low was on, yeah, October 30th, okay? Yep. And then we have the second low, which was November 3rd, okay? Yep. Those two lows there are your neckline. If you draw a neckline from there, if that take gets taken out over the next few sessions, which would coincide with the euro, US dollar, and the pound US dollar going up, the dollar index, you hit and take hit support. You have a nice little slide there, and all three of these currencies could give you a nice move. So the yen, you could see probably retrace back to that 148 even, so even 147, you know, 250 something like that, 147 300 area, you know. So you're looking at some nice, you know, trades that you can get on sure. for a few days for sure. Those are great, man. I appreciate you walking us through them. Three great trades. Uh, and wh what kind of room do you give yourself on on a trade like that, Teddy, in a, in a currency trade like this? You know, let's just say even the yen, we're at 150.83, so you'd be looking for maybe a, a, a pullback to the 149 area or 149, what's the low? 149.18 is, is the mm -hmm. low of November 3rd. And mm -hmm. if you're making a, a trade there looking for lower price there, what, what kind of a stop do you try and give yourself or how do you think about that for people who that's, are a, that's a great question so let's say, let's take the us dollar yen trade on that so my my point would be so the low was a price point it's 149.18 um okay so if you were to sell it say let's say you had a stop in to get in the market 149.17 or 15 or something like that okay. to give yourself the room to confirm the low you know if you take that out i would use pretty much the swing high which would be probably set today you know so that would be probably around 151 so it is a nice. there's a little bit of, of, a, of a gap there it's 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 not like a cheap trade however sure. if you're looking at what you're looking to make on it you're looking to make every bit of two to one ratio and potentially if the dollar index gets hammered like let's say that i'm right on these trade setups on just a currency basis but what if the yield curve actually starts to fall apart and they start to pull back strong that reinforces that trade well then you know and we even have like lower oil prices that could give the yen you could get it down to 145.09 and that could happen within like a period of three to five trading sessions so sure. then you're looking at three to three to four times your uh your risk reward uh you know ratio right there which is i think is a tremendous type of opportunity for this situation because it's reinforced by other currencies you know i always say that the best indicators of the markets are other indicators i have a lot of friends you know why don't you use this or look at this and look at that i'm like because they're all lagging for the most part you know when it comes to indicators you know price price discovery is not the same as indicators what they give you when it comes to you know gauging overbought oversold and what have you you know but one thing that's pretty pure at any given moment is what's going on with another market you know and if you use other markets as the indicators that's when you get your strongest reinforcement for trades i love it man i appreciate three trades everybody likes concise info you know no um floating around it you got price action you got to stop and you got to love when you have clarity in terms of where your price level is when you have your stop where you think 
you're going to get in for momentum and you have a trading plan and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but at least you have clarity as opposed to getting in a trade where you're not quite sure with the levels. So that's what I like about how you set those up. And folks, we archive every um, segment we do, every interview we do. So you had so much great information, Teddy. If anybody wants to check it out, right on our YouTube channel, just search TFNN. We archive just this interview every week. You can check that out. And don't forget about the Tiger Forex report, folks. You just heard that that was, that was a great segment, Teddy. Thanks for putting that Thanks, together. Thanks, Tommy. I, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Take care. Folks, check it out. The Tiger Forex Report right under the newsletter tab. Uh, three great trades. And I like that clarity. We'll be back to finish up the program, folks. Stay tuned. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by 10 points. That's almost a quarter percent right now, trading at 4,406. We're coming into a natural area right now, 4,400, a nice round number. That's the area that we topped out on in October. That's the area that you bottomed out at from August 17th to basically August 25th. And you back it up even a little bit further, and you can see the chop that we had around 4,400 when you go back to June of this year as well. That's a daily chart we're looking at right now. So 4,400, right? Critical area in terms of our first brief pullback, an area of June you accelerated higher from. That's your pullback in August. That's the area that you chopped around at in October, most importantly, probably. Um, the probabilities of streaks are very difficult, and we're coming into the seventh or eighth straight day. 
We got quite a shift here from the chairman. Follow that up from a somewhat Goldilocks jobs scenario for the month of October. So don't think that the market might not be getting ahead of itself when it just gained almost 300 points. I mean, you're talking about what's 4406 minus 4122. That's 284 S&P points, which is about almost a 7% pop from the lows. Yeah, pretty remarkable. 7% pop from October 27th. So there is some optimism priced in here. Remember, Disney earnings after the bell. Let's see how they're trading. Up about a third of a percent right now, up 30 cents. We check in on Amazon after their strong day yesterday. You check in on the big dogs. Apple, man, this stock is so strong. Apple, up by eight tenths percent right now. You jump over to Microsoft, speaking of strong, up by six tenths percent. Microsoft's going to make all-time highs, man. <whistles> Watch out. How about Google? Up by about two tenths. NVIDIA, the poster boy for AI, up 1.4 percent right now. And we jump over to Tesla. Why not? Tesla off about three tenths percent. S and P's trading up by 12 points. Basically, session highs right now. 44.07. The highs back in October. Will end the program. 44.30. So only about 23 points away from that actual spike high. Folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day right here at TFNN. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman. He's coming up next right now, live with the Tiger Technicians Hour. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Have a great day. Basil's up next, folks. Have a great one. <laughs>